Witcher. Netflix's new intended juggernaut has finally released season 2 after 2 years, but the season has been received with mixed reviews unlike season 1. What has caused this seemingly underwhelming season? Let's get into it. Welcome to The Hollywood Scholar. I'm Jed Morgan, and I love The Witcher. I love the world, the characters, the monsters, the setting, everything else contained in this incredible story. Or rather, I'm a massive fan of the books and games. I kind of enjoyed Netflix's season one of The Witcher and its prequel anime, and I wholeheartedly love Henry Cavill's casting and performance, but season one still left me unfulfilled. From poor monster designs, to strange changes from the books, and to the infection of modern woke feminist politics, there was just something off about the show. It wasn't The Witcher that I had fallen in love with. Coming into season two, I was interested, but far from excited. Little knowing what truly lay ahead of me in season two. And spoilers ahead. What one word can wholly and entirely describe season two? Boring. It was so goddamn boring. It's plotting plot and uninteresting characters left me praying for the end of the season just to be free from this unmitigated boredom. It was action light and what little action that it had was lame and poorly choreographed. Season 1 had some incredible fights where Geralt displayed his superior skill and sheer ferocity, decimating enemies with ease. But this time it's just, art this, quin that, scream there, no choreography. I love that they're using more signs, but they need to support the combat, not overshadow it. Beyond just being boring, they changed far more from the books this time around and injected far more political messaging. Everything that I disliked about Season 1 was expounded in Season 2. We got less Witcher in this season, in the fucking Witcher show. This is the Yennefer show, not the Witchers. Why do they hate him so much? Well, it's simple. He's a white, straight, male. He must be replaced or subdued to prop up the other characters. The Witcher already had political allegory and progressive dynamics, but it was done with talent and care all to service the greater plot and story. The show removed the heart of the books, leaving only, as the critical drinker would say, THE MESSAGE. When all you have is the message, fans will reject your product, while the critics will jizz themselves climbing over each other to declare their love for it. And that dichotomy of fans versus critics can plainly be seen here on Rotten Tomatoes. While the critics are giving it an 81%, and the fans are only doing 77% as the whole of a series, you should take a closer look at Season 2. That's pretty bad. The critics are giving it a 94 fucking percent for that atrocious season, whereas the fans are doing a little bit more fair 63%. See if the top critics have anything. The top critics aren't much worse. It's not that much difference. Pretty sad, to be honest. Let's read some of these fans' responses. Season 2 is dull, boring, and lazy writing. Actors are playing terrible. Such wasted potential. Season is not true to the characters. They made a hundred-year-old wise patient Vesemir at selfish and childish. That's a really good point. They make up a villain when the Witcher has a multitude of villains. We never get to see the world because of all the teleporting. They wrote Eskel as a childish fool and then killed him. I love the character in the books and games, but it was hard to believe that that actor was conveying Vesemir. As a fan, I am disappointed. I'll go into that a little bit more with Eskel. Better than retelling... I needed to show both sides that some fans are liking this, but that's not really an argument. Sadly, the series has nothing to do with the books. It's bland, mediocre, and almost primitive compared to the source material. A lot of one and a half stars in here, as you can see. It doesn't worth the watch. If there was a negative score, I'd gladly give it. Wow. Season 1 was strong, but the showrunners have dropped the ball big time with Season 2. The acting and writing was terrible. The casting choices 
seem informed more by politics and actual acting ability. That's actually a really good point from Alex M. And we'll go into that further later. But now let's take a closer look at what these revered and trusted critics have to say about this revolutionary show, as I've heard said. I entirely expected season two to be more of the same. It's not. It's better, at, at least <laughs> at least based on the first four episodes. The Witcher isn't afraid to be complicated, weird, violent, funny, magical, and corny in the second season. Who wouldn't toss a coin to that? Uh, what complicated things were in it? It was very straightforward, especially compared to what we've seen before. Weird? Alright, I'll give you that one. It was weird. Violent? There wasn't really a whole lot of action in it, so not really violent. Funny? It, they tried to go more of the comedy route than most Witcher products normally do, and it didn't land well for me. Magic? There was magic. And horny? There was, what, one scene? Fuck off. For the fans of the show and newcomers, The Witcher still delivers enough escapism fun. Yeah, not a whole lot of great shit here. Top critics, not any better. Oh, we've got a rotten one here. Let's see what this uh, New York Magazine critic has to say. In its attempt to build a bigger world, the series falls prey to more fantasy tropes than it masters. Wow, an honest opinion from a critic. That's very rare. I'm going to have to keep an eye out on this critic to see if they're actually a champion of the people versus champion for the corporations. I know it sounds like I hate the season, but there were still good parts about it that I enjoyed, especially the first episode, which was by far the best of it. Though that's not really saying much. This one is just as guilty as all the others of being boring, predictable, action light, action lame, woke, and everything else. <laughs> Fire for my guests. What I believe saved this episode for me was Christopher Hivu, terrible pronunciation by the way, as Nivellen. This Game of Thrones alumni shown across the screen with charisma and heart, perfectly capturing the soul of Beauty and the Beast, from which the story was based. Despite much of his plot being changed from the books, I still quite enjoyed it, sympathizing with him and his plight. He had some bad dialogue like explaining how witches are made. But he made the best of what he had, creating a compelling performance. And his design was incredible too, despite again being a far departure from the books. Nivellen's other half was far more complicated in my opinion. The Brooks' design was competently made again, and her creepy introduction was great, even though it made no sense for her even being there while Geralt, a witcher with highly enhanced senses, was in the house. However, her biggest problem was the story had difficulty condemning her actions and making her an outright villain having her constantly begging for Ciri's sympathy, which painted Geralt in a bad light. In the book, she was manipulating the Vellum and grooming him to be a fearsome monster beyond his wildest dreams, and Geralt intervened to save his new friend. This time, Geralt misunderstood everything, creating the conflict of the episode. Though it was the best episode of the season, it was still a muddled mess. You're safe now, right? Yes, you can stop worrying, really. Oh, you're right. Just hard to believe it's over and done with. Triss, 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 Triss. What can I say about Triss? Well, she has more screen time this season, so that's something, I guess. Oh, and her hair's finally red, so that's good. Okay. Oh, and she had a moment. Just a brief moment where she showed some vulnerability when she told Geralt that she was horny. This revealed a tiny, tiny piece of character hidden beneath the writer's laziness. Originally, the show race swapped her to not have to write her well while having a default response of, You're racist, if anyone questioned the change. So it's nice to see a glimmer of something minuscule bleeding through that decision. But despite all of that, she's also a fucking cunt. She knows Yennefer is alive. We saw them together. But she doesn't tell Geralt anything despite seeing him in pain? Yeah, that's the type of thing you want to see a hero do without even getting it mentioned. Geralt doesn't even ask her later when he finds out the truth. It could have been an interesting arc if the writers had acknowledged that it was wrong and that she did it to manipulate Geralt into bed. Which is something that's consistent with her character. In the first Witcher game, she took advantage of Geralt's amnesia to sleep with him. The show could have built off that, 
that had Geralt confront her when he found out Yen was alive, ending the show with him mad at both of his love interests, leading to something interesting in season three. Hmm, but no, the writers just kind of forgot. While Danny kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet and Euron's forces. Well, that's one way of doing it. Yen's personality is even more hollow than it was last season. Now she just swears and is angry. That's not a character or a personality. And she faces no consequences, nor is condemned by the writers for her actions of kidnapping Ciri and nearly killing her to get her powers back. The fact that she got as far as she did speaks to her lack of morality or relatability, disconnecting the audience from her and forcing them to consider her a villain, despite the show being very firmly on her side throughout it all. It would have been more interesting if she'd been tempted with the offer, but still refused. Not getting her powers back, choosing to live as a normal person rather than corrupt herself and hurt the people she supposedly cares about. Then they should have created a new arc for her in season 3 to restore her power. That would have gone a long way for the audience connecting with her. Instead, she's just hollow swearing lady. That does bad things, but everyone still likes for some reason. Some classic signs of Mary Sueism in there. Enough. Get down. With a flip? What do you think? All right. Take off the blindfold. Series actually my favorite Witcher character. Her journey and her arc through the books and games, especially when she travels to the land of Ain Eli, is compelling and incredible. From coddled princess to self-sacrificing legend by the end of The Witcher 3, she's a deeply flawed character, making innumerable mistakes, getting countless people killed until she learns and struggles against insurmountable odds to improve herself and to emulate Geralt more and more. It's a heartbreaking story, full of drive and spirit. Ciri isn't just magically great at everything. She fails nigh constantly, but she always gets back up and through the dedication of many years becomes something truly amazing. In the show, none of her characteristics are translated across to the audience. She has no arc or struggle. Sure, there's the obstacle course. Which she masters in a single day. The same obstacle course which took Witcher boys months to finish, with or without their mutations. Throughout the story, she's constantly told she's amazing, despite doing virtually nothing in the show's entirety. Additionally, the actress playing her displays no emotions, ever. In the show, Ciri is just sort of there, listening to other people praise her constantly for no reason. Another prime example of a potential Mary Sue. Woo! Woo, you could hang portraits off my nipples right now. Dandelion, because that's his fucking name, not Yaskier, He's in the show a lot less this season, so I don't have much to say about him, except, is he gay for Geralt now? Huh. Didn't really see that in season 1 or the books and games. I always thought he might be a little bi, but despite that, that has nothing to do with his relationship with Geralt. It seems like Hollywood doesn't know how to write brotherly friendships anymore. If guys like each other, then they must be gay, seems to be their mentality. More importantly than that, his medicine, where the writers responded to the fans' criticism of season 1, brings up some interesting questions. It was difficult for me to understand what the point of the scene was, however. They acknowledged that people didn't like the multiple timelines, then promptly told them that they weren't smart enough to understand it. Are they trying to apologize and move forward with the intention of doing better? Or are they simply attacking fans like so much of Hollywood does these days? I'd love your thoughts, so if you'd like to comment below with what you think their intentions were for that scene, I'd be interested to see what your consensus is.
When it comes to the other supporting characters, I generally didn't connect or like any of them. And the decision to make Eskel a dick was awful. Before straight up killing him, erasing his future in the series? They should have just created a new character for that part of the story, because he didn't act, talk, or behave like Eskel in any way. So why even call him that? If they had, I wouldn't have had a problem with them killing off the character in the episode either. The actor did fine, but I feel like he would have made a better Lambert, because the superiority and anger that he displays is very much in line with Lambert's personality, not Eskel's. Speaking of Lambert, I do believe he was a miscast, but he did fine with what he was given, not really standing out at all. Just like Lambert, Vesemir was fine capturing the character's gruffness, but none of the overlording father figure that made the character so endearing. I love Dijkstra's casting, I'm a big fan of that actor, even though he wasn't really in the season much, so he's one of the few characters I'm looking forward to seeing more of. And Philippa was only in one scene, but I worry for her character for the same reasons I worried about Triss. If they simply recast her as an excuse to not put any effort into writing her well, then I fear fans will despise her as much as they do Triss. Though, that has yet to be seen. Fringilla is by far the weakest part of the show, another example of race swapping so they could be lazy. For being one of the show's primary antagonists, she carries no intimidation, displays only middling magical abilities, and just deadpans through her entire performance without some dark gravitas to her character. It erases much of the stakes and tensions that could have driven the story. The same problems that plague Fringilla also threaten Amir, his casting being far from adequate. Unless the actor really picks up his game, I do not see anyone being afraid or intimidated by him. As one of the series' primary villains dwarfed only by Aridin, the Wild Hunt, and the White Frost, Amir needs to stand out and strike fear into everyone he meets. He's called the White Flame that dances on the graves of his enemies, for fuck's sake. With this actor, that line will come across as more of a joke than an omen. Perhaps I'm being too harsh and season 3 will blow Amir out of the park. We'll see. Last, and apparently least of all, The Witcher, the fucking main character. I don't really have much to say on him because the show doesn't have much to say on him. Geralt is depicted as a whiny, vapid, clumsy oaf, simping his way through life, tripping over himself to tell Ciri how awesome she is. God damn it, this is barely a shade of the true Geralt. Henry does everything humanly possible to keep Geralt interesting. But even his stellar performance cannot help those atrocious scripts. There's nothing more to be said about him. In conclusion, if you liked anything Witcher related before, don't watch this fucking show. Only people who have no knowledge of what could have been will like this show. It's barely a shade of this incredible world and story. It is another example of how modern politics can utterly decimate something amazing and rob the fans of yet another beloved franchise. Been through hell and high water, you and me. The fact is, you know me better than anyone else does. I actually wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Thanks for everything. And no, we all miss you, old friend. So, might be my birthday, but I say, here's to you. Now, tell us how you're doing. Anyway, that's all I have for today. So please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Anon. If you like what I do here and want to see good, compelling stories that Hollywood will no longer give you, check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern-day mental illness issues. Books 1, Down in Flames, and Book 2, Apocalypse Then, currently on sale. Book 3, Kill the Dark, coming soon.